show you. Right. If you can find it. I can find it. Okay, so they're not there. Uh, okay, so this is, uh, this was sort of inspired by Hans Rosling's talk that we, that we uh, watched la yeah, last night, I think. So this is, uh, like Andy said, this is Nomis data, and the Nomis data is really interesting because it's an annual population survey. They survey all kinds of different sorts of uh, things about the population every year for the Office of National Statistics. So although we concentrated on job data, there's lots of really interesting stuff that could be drawn out. And a bit of future work, which would be really nice, would be firstly to try to refine what we've done a little bit, because we've looked at breaking down all the data by constituency, partly because we couldn't have quite as many columns and rows as we wanted in a, in a Google Docs spreadsheet. Um, but the other thing would be to, to pull out more data of different types um, to add to this, to compare different things. So the, uh, the thing we've got here is number of available jobs uh, on this axis, which I'll just adjust to be the, the average, if I can find it. So this is average month, monthly data. And then on this axis, we want something like um, an unemployment rate. So this is the unemployment rate for 16-year-olds and over. So already you can see there's a sort of big difference between certain constituen constituencies. And there's a few interesting outliers, which I'm selecting here. So here, the number of available jobs is greater as we go to the right. So the further right one of these blobs is, and each blob is a constituency. So the further right it is, the more jobs are available in that constituency. And the further up the chart it is, the more unemployment there is. So if there's a lot of available jobs and a lot of unemployment, that would seem to be a bit odd, because that would suggest that there may be our jobs for people to take. So that might ask a question like, you know, is there a really sensible reason why people aren't taking those jobs? Are they not qualified for them? Are the jobs in a particular industry or, or what have you? And if we had a bit more data, we might be able to look at that. And if we press play here, we can look at how this data changes through the years we had available. So for all of this data, we had from 2004 to 2010, I think it was. And you can see some constituencies sort of pretty much stay where they are. All constituencies find that by the time we get to 2010 and the recession we're in now, there aren't many jobs available, which is sort of what you'd expect. But some odd constituencies sort of bounce around a bit. So Ladywood in particular seems slightly odd. So whether those numbers are wrong and they've been misreported in some way or, or we haven't averaged them correctly, or whether that really is a very sort of strange constituency when it comes to jobs is a is a really interesting question that you can ask from this data. So, yeah. Uh, so I think I think that one of the things that we'd have to consider is whether the um, is the data validity. I, as far as we can tell, the data it is valid. We want to do double checks. The way that unemployment rates are calculated and the way that the number of jobs available are calculated are quite political things. There may well have been changes in those. Uh, it's very interesting to see this massive drop in jobs available in Ladywood here and quite surprising that it seems to have an astounding number of jobs available compared to other areas. Uh, I was looking at this uh, data with Pauling, uh, Politics and Brum earlier and we were looking at differences in male and female unemployment and that was uh, that was another interesting area so I'll just have a look at, at some of that. So if we take uh, economically inactive females inactive males. Okay. Um, we've got 
got so much data here, it's hard to spot them. Economic activity rate for males, and we'll take the economic activity rate for females. What should we down? Uh, is it that one there? Okay. Great. So, if we, let's just clear uh, Wolverhampton there, and let's just switch off Hodgehill temporarily. Select Lady Wood and watch how that changes over time. So, as it moves to the right, that means that as more males becoming economically active, it's moving down, which is a drop in female activity. But there, if we look at that, as a drop in both uh, uh, male and female economic activity in Lady Wood. Now, if we look at Hodge Hill, uh, which is there. Again, th these are the two ones that really stand, stand out here from the other West Midlands constituencies. These are all over the West Midlands, uh, Lundial, Birmingham, right at the top what we've got Sutton Coalfield, as you might expect, Cannock Chase, both got high economic activity. We just rerun that for male and female activity in Hodge Hill. So we see that the drop that we've got drop there in female activity, still dropping female activity, and only now in 2008 we're getting a, a rise in female employment. So it seems that female employment is changing a lot more in Hodge Hill than male there. What is that? Well, changing in a different pattern at least. Now we haven't looked at part-time and full-time employment. It's probably some. Uh, some implications there. Uh, what we've got is, we've gone from finding the data on the internet, transforming it, uh, and then loading it into data visualisation so that we can explore the data. So the idea is that people who actually have an interest in this and understanding the subject can have a look at it, see if there's patterns that, they, that stand out to them, and then investigate those patterns further by looking at some of the other data that we've got in there. I think that's it. That's it. Awesome.